In today's show, we're going to talk about how to create QR codes in your Power App. Cool. And we're going to talk about how to download those files without using premium connectors. So you could put it into a PDF, send it into an email, or just save the file as a PNG. Sound like fun? But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to talk about QR codes and Power Apps, which is fun and interesting and something that people on Twitter voted for. So that's why we're talking about it. And we're going to use it to finally show you a trick that I've had up my sleeves for a while. Uh, thanks to Daniel LeMay. Daniel came up with how to do this. And so we're going to finally show it to you. But it's going to be how we're going to grab this file because it's going to come from a web service. And we want to grab it, but we don't want to make our flow or our power app premium. So we have to kind of eh, work through the system a little bit to do that. It should be kind of interesting, but not too hard, right? All right. Anyway, now for the blah, 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 let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. If you're not familiar with QR codes, right, that's what these little things are. And the idea of QR codes is that you can scan them most often with a phone, right? You'll see these on billboards or booths or different signage. But you scan it with your phone and your phone will say, oh, what is in there? It'll look and see, and like if it's a URL, which that one currently is, then it'll offer to open it for you in Edge. Here, let me show you real quick. Okay, so here on my phone, I've just got my camera open, right? It's on an iPhone, works the same on Android. And so if I just come over here, and you can see that as soon as I do that, it says, hey, open an Edge, which is my default browser. And if we click on that, then it will automatically jump us straight to the URL. That's it, right? That's one of the big upsides of QR codes. Now, they don't have to be, um, a URL, that's probably the most common. But if you were to put something like text in there, um, then it would just return the text. And in most cases, like your camera would just say, here's the text and we'll go search the internet for it. So not usually ideal. So you're probably going to see those as um, URLs. All right. Anyway, let's get rid of all this. So the idea, if you just want a QR code, getting an image of it, putting your app, no big deal. But what you probably want to do is make it dynamic, right? So here you can see I made it training. Like if I just change it to buddy is cute, right, it's a new puppy, then that URL or that QR code would return that text. Not super helpful, but would work. Or if we, you know, go here. And so then if we say HTTPS www.powerapps911.com, there you go. So that URL would go there. So how does it work? Well, what we're doing here is we're taking advantage of a third party service called quickchart.io. Keep in mind, this is all free. So if we go look at their documentation, they say, hey, basically this part of our um, API is free as long as you don't use it too much. And if you don't, then here you go. Just use this URL and we will spit you out a QR code. So if you just copy their URL, right? We're on their site, copy. We'll open a new browser tab. We'll paste that in. And it just literally, boom, there is that. So that's all it really is, right? Quickchart.io, QR, text equals, and then whatever you do the text, they will automatically render the QR code. Now, if you come over here and mess around a little bit, you'll see that you can make them in different colors. Uh, you can do different levels of padding. You can embed an image in your QR code, right? Kind of crazy stuff there. Um, and so down here, there are the different parameters. 99% of the time, you don't really need to worry about anything other than the text and maybe the size. But there are additional options down here if that is what you need to work with, right? Uh, so like dark and light, that's changing the coloring, uh, the error correction level. So this is how um, detailed is it or how resilient is the QR code if they're getting a bad scan. So obviously you'd want to increase the error collection level um, to a higher level if you're in an environment where you're taking pictures, maybe you're printing these out, putting them on labels on uh, inventory or something, then you'd want to increase that level so you had a better one. And then there's all the stuff with the image things, right? That's for marketing. You're not going to do that in a Power App scenario. But look, that simple URL. So if we go back over to our Power App, what do we have to do? So what this is, this is an image control. That's all it is, just a simple image control. And so actually, let's just insert a new one and just talk through. So we'll go here, we'll insert media and image control. We'll put it right here so you can all see it. And so if we take that URL that we just copied from the minute ago, remember URLs are text, so you just put it into, um, you know, in double quotes, there it is. So that's it. That is the one, if I scan that my phone, it'd return, here's my text. And if I went up here and just changed this to Shane is cool, which is a lie, 
but then now that would return the text Shane is cool. That's it. Super simple, right? So all I did for this one up here was I went and said, hey, if the text input, I want to tie to the text input, right? So quick chart IO QR question mark text equals the text input dot text and size equals the image's width. The reason I did that is because I want to make sure that the resolution that's being returned matches the resolution I need. So by tying it to the width of this, I automatically get that without having to really think, right? So if I want to update this one, what we would do, we just go here, I would delete that. So text equals ampersand, whatever goes here. So if you want to make it equal my email address, that is now a QR code of my email address. Whatever it right, Power Apps just wants what Power Apps wants. It just wants text at this point. As long as you give it the text that you want, you're in business. So whether you're looking up to a SharePoint list to get the ID, because maybe you want to use the QR code to deep link into a Power App. Oh, hey, if you haven't done deep linking, check out that video. Um, you know, whatever. It it doesn't care. It just wants text. It doesn't matter how you're getting to that text. So whether it's that user email or it is the uh, the text input again. Oh my goodness, I can't type. Text input one dot text. So now it's just doing the same thing as this one with a text input. It is going to do. And if you want to add another string, right? What do you do? Ambersand. All right. So remember that's the concat from Power Apps. Then you'd get inside quotes and you'd have to do another ambersand. And you'd say size equals mm, 12. We'll make it really small. And now it is super tiny. Now you're like, but well, Shane, it shows it there. That's because my image control is set to fit. If I set it to um, the center, then it gets the smaller one, right? So just keep that in mind is that you can control all of these facets and you would just keep adding on. If you want to make size dynamic, then you just make this portion dynamic as well. The same up here, I also, I did the, uh, the colors here. Let's copy those real quick. We'll add this to the one we've been building. So if we went down here and just pasted all that in, um, get rid of you, get rid of you. There you go. And now it's in the Power Apps 911 colors. I got to make amber sands. You just can cat, remember? And all of these are those settings that were on oh, this page, all right? All of these. So if you wanted to add, change the, uh, the margin, you just say margin and 12. So we just go back over here and be like, Ambersand margin equals 12. And now it has a big padded margin. Great, great. Doesn't matter there. Um, so also as you're playing with this, remember that you can just stick them into here, right? So we can just put it right here. Oh. And the reason I wanna remind you guys of this is because I want, I don't want you to say it's not working and blame Power App, get the URL to work here, and then use it in the Power App, okay? So there you go. If you just need to throw a QR code on the screen, you're done, congratulations. You don't wanna do that though, right? You wanna do something with that QR code now. So let's do the easy one first. What if I wanna make it so that this shows up as an email? I wanna get this QR code here in an email, right? All we have to do is we add the Outlook Send Connector, and then we just need to do this, right? So image source equals, and then the URL that is generating that. And so by specifying image one dot image, right? This is image one dot image. It is automatically going to uh, pass that URL. Now, the way that you can test this, insert a label on your screen. All right, let's put it right here. And if we just say, ugh, if we just say image one dot image, you can see that it is not an actual image, right? which causes us some issue and we're gonna have to jump through some hoops in a minute. All it really does is returns that URL that we built based on all the inputs that we gave it, right? So that's what's getting embedded in here. So this is image source equals HTTP quickchart.io body, body, body. But that's it. You press that and then you get this lovely email. So putting in an email, super duper easy because emails, the HTML engine for emails accepts URLs for images, so you don't have to do a lot of hoops. What if you want to save the file or build it as a PDF? Then you got to try a little harder, okay? So to save it as a PDF or as a file, I guess we'll save it as a file first, we're going to go over to our flow, and we're going to look at this action, right? 
So this is one we've never used before. I've been holding on to this one for a little bit. Like I said earlier, Daniel LeMay kind of showed me this, I don't even remember when it was, a while back. And I've been trying to find a place that made sense to show you guys. So in Flow, there is an, uh, one drive for business action called upload file from URL. You can give it a source URL, like the URL of this image that we just did, and it will go get whatever's there, and then it will save it as whatever file you tell it to. So here I'm saying go get that image and then save it as a uh, PNG file, right? So you'll see from Power Apps, I'm passing that as a PNG file. I'll just go show you right now. All right, so I'm sending it as QR and a date timestamp dot PNG. So by pressing this button or running this flow, what it's doing over here is it is making this uh, right, right here, right? QR body, body, body dot PNG. And if you click on it, it is the saved image. So if you just want to grab this and save this as an image file, you're done. And now keep in mind, you do have to use this OneDrive uh, action, right? So you'd have to save it in OneDrive. If you wanted to then go and create a copy of it in SharePoint or something, you can do that, right? Attach it to an email. The world is your oyster. But this gets the physical file to you. This is kind of magical. And I'm not going to lie. We've used this to do some really tricky stuff in the past as well. But right now, we're talking about saving a PNG. Keep in mind, like, this would also work if you've ever, you remember my video from like 2018? I probably don't, but I did one on Google Maps and how to get the Google Map image using this same URL concept. Guess what? Use that video up there, and then you could download that Google Maps image and save it as a file in your OneDrive. Fun? Okay, but what if you want to now take that file and you want to embed it in a PDF? I think that's what most of you really want to do. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use the OneDrive for Business get file content, right? So it's using the dynamic content of the ID of the file that just came from here. And as I'm walking through all this, remember that the app and the flow is all available for download. Just go to training.powerapps.com and you go to the YouTube library and you can sign up for a subscription out there and then you can download this and all the other apps that I've built in videos, right? So you can just download this whole thing with all my lovely little notes and everything. What a, what a lovely way to go. Anyway, so what this does is gets the file content. So this action says, hey, this file you just uploaded to OneDrive, let me get its guts. And what those guts turn out to be is the base 64 encoding of the image. What do we need when we make PDF images? Base 64. So it gets that for us. So then now we can go down here and say, all right, well now I want to create a file in OneDrive for business again. I'm going to put it in my QR images folder. I'm going to call it temp.html. I got to give it a proper structure, right? So header and all that fun stuff, the body, but look, then you are going to put in data image PNG base 64. And then the content, let me click on that so you can see what that looks like. Oh, it's not going to show you. So let's just do this. We'll say, do this, we'll copy, we'll paste. So what that is doing is it's saying, hey, give me the body, uh, get file content, question mark, and then dollar sign content. And that is the actual base 64 of that file. And by putting that into there, when we run this, what are we going to see over here? If we go back, we have a lovely little PDF file that has, look, our fancy QR code, right? That's the dynamic QR code we just generated. There is the actual URL. So if you wanted to have the URL that you were using on there for some reason, and then a little note for me, he doesn't like notes for me. But the key here is that that get file content got that out of there. And like if we back up here for a second, um, yeah, whatever, save whatever you want. So if we go look, you'll see that when the get file content, you can see the output there. So content type, image PNG, and then dollar sign content equals IV bore, blah, 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 which is the blah, blah, blah that you need. Because in the create file, what that then looks like is image source data image PNG base 64 comma, and then it automatically inserts that IV bore, all that funness, right? And we could scroll forever and see it. But it put all that in there for us. So that was the base 64. That's how I got the image over into our flow or into the PDF, right? Because unfortunately, the PDF rendering engine won't let you use the URL directly. You've got to get the file. So that creates the file, the HTML file. Then what do we do? We just do our usual convert file. And of course, if you haven't done it before, right? Like how to make a PDF, it's up there. It's hopefully something you've done before. We've done several videos on it, but I'll put a link up there as well. So then we convert it to PDF, and then we just create a file, a PDF file from that conversion. 
And remember this last step here, this could happen somewhere else. So if you wanted this step to happen in SharePoint online, um, or somewhere like that, right? Like you wanted it to be saved as an attachment in email or uploaded to Azure Blob Storage. It doesn't matter. This create file step doesn't have to happen in OneDrive for Business. All of these other steps, they absolutely do have to happen in OneDrive for Business. Okay? And remember, this will all happen in the OneDrive for Business of the user who pressed the button in the Power App because Power Apps is the trigger. But there you go, folks. That that's some really cool stuff, right? So the QR code stuff is interesting. A lot of people don't need those. That's okay, though it was voted for on Twitter. So if you don't follow me on Twitter, you're missing out because they get to vote and they chose this video topic. But this idea that I can use that flow and this whole upload file from URL to grab a file from an HTTP search to do a get and pull that down opens up some interesting possibilities, I do think. I'll leave it at that for today, okay? Having questions, any comments, any of that fun stuff, leave them below. I try to read as many of those as possible. Um, if we ever do anything to help, remember over the whole this came from, you know, we learned all this doing consulting projects for our customers at powerapps911.com. So we can do consulting projects for you or mentoring or any of that type of stuff as well. Yeah. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 911. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool? Thanks and have a great day.